Welcome to Zcast, everyone. I'm Zias Garavalo from ZK Research, and I'm here in Dallas at the Extreme Connect event. I'm joined today by uh, Robert Red from uh, C1, uh, known as C1 now, or 1C1. Yes. Right? And um, uh, Rob, you are the uh, VP for SLED, but your mandate's a little broader than that, right? So, um, a quick intro on yourself and who C1 is. You got it. You got it. So this will be going on my 10th year with C1. Uh, so you're I, a veteran there. <laughs> going on veteran, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, we've certainly yeah. seen enough. Uh, but yeah, my, my focus has historically been public sector. That's kind of where I grew up with the business. I had a couple of years uh, looking after. Sector. It is. Yeah. It is. But with that, a lot, of, uh, a lot of the important things that we try to focus our portfolio after, a lot of the business objectives, very, very clear in public sector. And now that we've become C1, and with that, very concerned around the connected human experience, so much of that is now very tightly ingrained yeah. with what we do in public sector, how we view ourselves, our portfolio, our go-to-market, um, getting customers, often in tough spots, getting them to have an answer. That's what we really gear our time towards. Yeah, and so as I mentioned, we're here at the Extreme Networks uh, Connect event, and uh, your human connection I find interesting because I think there's a lot of parallels to Extreme's vision of the infinite enterprise. In fact, Very we true. watched the keynote this morning, Nabil Bukhari spent a lot of time talking about that. And uh, uh, talk about what that, what that means to you. The, what is exactly the human connections or infinite enterprise, how, how they parallel, what, what exactly does that mean to customers? Yeah, and I think it's important. Nabil did a fantastic yeah. job, right? And this, this has been important vision for him because he's very responsive to the customer, right? And that's one of the things that Extreme has done very well with over the years. They're, they're nimble, they're at a good size where they can listen to the customers and respond. I think a key thing for that is, uh, I mean, let's follow along with software-defined networking, right? There, there was a point in time where we valued everything that we touched on the network, right? And it yes. was human interaction, and we had to do it because we were the best ones fit for it. Uh, our our uh, former chief advisor of enterprise networking, now a director for public sector, Sean Mathias, he put it so well um, at C1 when he said, when it comes to man versus machine, machine wins. And so when it comes to those things that we can automate, things like fingerprinting for IoT devices, yeah. like we talked about with on stage with ZTNA, use ZTNA, universal ZTNA on the main stage, anything that we can do to automate the provisioning of security policies for APs, for switches, why not do that? Yeah. Why not leave that to, to machine? Right, and, and of course, we're the brains behind orchestrating it all, but that's how we scale, and that's, I think, Nabil's vision for, for infinite enterprise. When we talk about distributed architectures, when we talk about sensitive workloads and user work going across the wild, wild web, right? Third-party networks that we don't own, that we don't operate, we don't manage, we don't have visibility into, but we rely on to get to the cloud and all of our apps, everything that lives where we work, like that all happens across a distributed architecture that that we need help with. Extreme has stepped up, right? And they're putting technology in place yeah, and to- Yeah, and that is a big difference in, because I, I started my career as a network engineer when I think about the, the mandate I had a couple of decades ago, or even when you first started. You really worried about the network was your corporate network, anything behind your firewall you own, or anything on the other side, you didn't. But we also didn't have everybody working from home. We weren't worried about remote kiosks. We didn't, there wasn't really a lot of ITOT integration. You're right? right. So when you think about the evolution of the network, it has gone from something, I think, that just connected a handful of assets to literally everything. And I think that's why the concept of the infant enterprise, um, I think, is so appropriate today because it's the connection of uh, not just people to people, but people to machines, machine yes, to machines. Machine to machine. Yeah. And I, in fact, when you were talking about IoT this morning, I was thinking about how different even the IoT, OT world is, because it used to be those traditional verticals, right? Manufacturing, warehousing, but now every company has got a handful of room sensors, badge readers, temperature scanners, you know, window blinds, things like that that are all connected to a common network, right? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So with that challenge to manage that environment, challenge to secure all of that, because the sensor manufacturers, they're not putting in hardened no. security by any means. They're trying to make the cheapest thing possible. Yeah, and on the topic of security, you know, we've been talking about a couple of decades, the convergence of networking and security. Yes. And uh, I think one of the things that's held that back is operationally, security teams are security teams, network teams are network teams, and never the two shall meet. Have you seen more coming together of those two functions? Absolutely, yeah. we have, we have. Um, and I, this is a corollary, right? But even physical security, as it's become more IP enabled, is living on the network. It's being managed 
by networking professionals, right? And the same thing is happening on the cybersecurity front, right? We know that there's a lot of different operators in that space, right? It's not just a, C C it's not just a CISO, yeah. it's not always a very organized, controlled security organization. There is a lot of overlap. Now we see things like the technology side of it, the solution side of it, that's also overlapped, right? There's some yeah. sharing involved. And I, quite frankly, I think it promotes good interaction between teams yeah. to have technology that brings them onto common platform, single policy, so we're not creating these fiefdoms and, and these own you know, little walled silos. No, security is an everything conversation. Yeah. And now the technology is catching up to what organizationally we should have always been. Yeah, and uh, so when you think about extreme, right, they rolled out their universal ZK a little while ago, yeah. they showed it off here. Um, I've always thought of them as a network vendor, but now more and more, they're really a security vendor as well, correct? True. And uh, have you, uh, are you optimistic that, uh, you know, they'll be able to leverage their network install base and be able to bring security in that way? Yes, yeah. and, and, and I, I would say- I actually think it's very hard to do security without networking today, so. Very true, yeah. very true. And that, that goes back to even um, what Gartner has pinned several years back around SASE and some yeah. of the predictions there, right? Uh, and some of them even self-fulfilling, right? That we're, we're speaking this into the market because it's the right thing to do. Um, however, I will say, um, every manufacturer is finding their security story right now, yeah. right? And it's interesting to see different manufacturers stretch into security or stretch- In both ways, security into the vendors the edge. No, yeah. Absolutely yeah. right, absolutely right. So we see it again and again, we're in the midst of something very interesting from a, a go-to-market perspective. Yeah. Now, in the case of Extreme, I would argue they have been in the security market. They have not touted their success in the security market. Fabric is one of the most powerful security platforms there is. Just you know, the, the, the idea that networks, by their very nature, are chatty. Networks want to be discovered, right? That's what IP does. That's how you find one another through different nodes of the network. And Fabric says, no, we're going to build inherent security. We're not going to run off of IP, right? We're going to be actually Mac-based. We are going to be hard to discover, right? The segments are going to be invisible. And they're doing that at scale with segmentation. And it's absolutely incredible. And they've been doing it for well over a decade. Yeah. Right. Well, in fact, if I was talking with Ed Meyerkord, their CEO, this morning about the fabric technology that they uh, that, that came from the acquisition of Avaya. And I, yes. I think it's um, uh, maybe the, one of the best kept secrets, unfortunately, in the network industry. I, I think the, the fabric is really unique to Extreme. Nobody else uses the SPV right. protocol. But when I talk to customers about it, it is so. Um, automated and so easy to set up and so easy to run at scale that they often scratch your heads and go, I wish we had known about this you know, years ago, right? So, it's true. Um, you know, so when you, when you talk to customers about the fabric, what do they, what do they like about it? Uh, well, I think you hit it. Yeah. They like the manageability of it, right? The it's security just so aspect, much easier than legacy networks, right? Yeah. It, it yeah. can be, it can yeah. be. And it takes some work to set up and it also takes a paradigm shift. You know, a lot of us you know, were bought into this industry through different certification tracks, right? And we see networking through a certain lens. Yes. This is not that lens, no, no. right? This is a different kind of thing to adopt, a yeah. different headspace to be in. But for customers, for regardless of vertical, if they're willing to dive in just a little bit, right? And try it on, see the demo, there is a lot of value, a lot of return on investment I, there. I think a key message to customers too, if, you know, for people watching this, is this isn't the same environment that you supported 20 years ago. And so the, the way you run your network can't be the same way you did it 20 years ago, right? And so the fabric, to me, is a fundamentally different way of operating a network, one that's built on the concept of agility and speed and automation. And that's when you look at, if you talk to any business leader about things they're trying to achieve, it's, it's those things. So, You're absolutely yeah, right. Yeah. Fixed, fixed ACLs can't yeah. scale to what we no. need anymore. And also just how we looked at things before. It was location and ownership was essentially our proxy for trust. Like our environments are not so simple any longer, No, right? And so uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you about the topic that everybody talks about today, which is AI, yes. right? And it made its way into in, onto stage. And of course, mm -hmm. there's a lot of value in AI ops for networking. Um, yes. But when I talk to customers around, it's not like a lot of customers have fully embraced it, right? And they're letting their machines run the network. So what are customers telling you about AI? What do they want to use AI for? And uh, where do you think we are on that adoption cycle right now? I think it's early. Yeah. 
very early in the adoption. The pitch is warming up. I think. <laughs> yeah. But it's extremely exciting and I think it's motivating for a lot of different folks, right? Uh, certainly on in our customer base, for C1, being able to say, okay, I, I'm listening, I'm recognizing some of the use cases, some of the needs. It's giving our engineers opportunity to be creative and co-create with some more of our leading customers as well um, to create things like Ellie, which is separate from the networking space, but more along the lines of, yeah. of customer That's a C1 experience. product, right? It Ellie, is a yeah. C1 product around uh, chatbot and, and AI for customer experience. Uh, it's just the tip of the iceberg about what we get to do. And fortunately for us, we've had a heritage in that, well over 10 years of, of curating data, our data lake repositories, to be right and fit for artificial intelligence, which is key, right? It's not, it's not so easy as rolling up ChatGPT. We really have to prepare the data itself um, for the for the best effect. Yeah. But I think in the customer space, what we're going to see, um, I would even say, you know, in the partner space, this affects Extreme as well. They are excited about some of the announcements that they will be able to make around AI, the Extreme way, and it's stuff that we should absolutely be sitting up to listen in on when Nabil and team are ready to announce. There's going to be some cool stuff there, but I think even longer term, it's going to be interesting for us as integrators and for, for the verticals, for customers, to have these tool sets. I really believe that we're going to be the ones with customers that are really helping to steer the go-to-market because it's the use case, right? It's We're closer to yeah. the use case. We might be helping to define that go-to-market strategy uh, even more clearly uh, than, than the, the partners, the manufacturers, the solution providers have, have done in the past. Yeah, All that right, would be now, an interesting shift. And uh, so since we are an extreme show, let's talk a little bit about extreme too. So one of the key messages that Nabil gave this morning was uh, one network, one cloud, yes. one extreme. And I will you know, tip my hat to the engineering team here at Extreme. Uh, for those not familiar with the extreme portfolio, it's really made up of a bunch of different acquisitions. And uh, it, it seems they've gone through that work now. You know, if you go back a couple of years, you had blue customers and red customers and purple customers, right? Well, represented the different manufacturers. But it actually is one platform today, is it not? It is. Yeah. And so that, uh, that I think, gives them an interesting advantage when you look at the M&A activity going on in the industry and the consolidation. Uh, they've gone through that work. Yes. And, and now they have one platform. And how important is that, though, to be able to have one platform and common hardware. It's, it's huge, right? The, the U and universal is not to be overlooked yeah. by any means. Um, and I think particularly for us as integrators, we're not just the ones designing and, and deploying, and we're not, we're not only those ones advising on what a customer should do, we're also in the day two spot, right? We're taking the onus of these customer environments, many of them that we deploy. And so for us, the tool set is valuable, right? Not only to the, the customer, but also to us. Um, in managing the operation of it. So as, as unified as it can be, uh, as straightforward as it can be for licensing, right? As, a, as an MSP, we're also consumers of that same licensing model. So we appreciate when it's easy not only to articulate to our customers, but the fact that we consume it as well uh, in a managed service provider model. So it's a big deal. Yeah, and so, uh, so last question, right? C1, uh, I noticed you're the title, sponsor, you're the lead sponsor at this yeah. event. So obviously Extreme must be an important partner to you, even though you're running your own customer event concurrently to this, you've got a pretty big uh, uh, C, you know, gathering of C1 people here. So talk about that relationship that C1 has with this Extreme and for customers that want to use Extreme, what they'd be able to, how they'd be able to leverage uh, C1. You got it, yeah. And at our own customer summit happening right now, yeah. we have some of the Extreme thought leaders yeah. joining there as well. We've yeah. been exchanging some pictures yeah. saying, oh man, we miss you, right? Yeah. We'll, so it's we'll a good bilateral. Later. Uh, it, relationship. Yeah. It is. It yeah. is very good, and that rolls all the way up to our CEO, yeah. which is fantastic to see that kind of interaction. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, what what customers can expect from us, right, and how how they can, uh, you know, leverage us in a, a a good working relationship. We understand the entire portfolio through and through, right? We're we're diamond partner by status, uh, but it goes much deeper than that, right? A lot of our our engineers. You know, this is the technology that they understand through and through. Like this is how they have spent their careers and invested their time. For our account executives, they understand this value prop within Extreme. So there's there's a lot of history here that goes under the hood uh, that makes us work well together. But in particularly, I think it's shared vision. All right, Nabil talked about how even the focus yeah. of an infinite enterprise or an infinitely distributed architecture is really for the benefit of the IT organization that has to manage that kind of sprawling environment. 
And for us, elevating connected human experiences, that's a key focus, right? It is, it is the human that operates the, the network. Even if the network is operating itself, right? And that's really the dream and the ambition with, with some of the technologies that are in place, the AI that we're seeing and anticipating in the future. Yeah. But there's a, a shared vision here, uh, a, shared, uh, a shared ethics almost that we're going to market with together, which is fantastic to see. Yeah. Well, I think to sum it up, the network's becoming more important, right? Extreme, I think, has got a, a really strong network foundation that customers you can build on, and you being a diamond partner can help customers actually realize that vision of the infinite enterprise and uh, make it a reality. Absolutely, so absolutely. If, so if people want to learn more about C1, where do they go? Uh, hey, 1C1.com. 1C1.com. Yeah, so. or find me on LinkedIn, Robert Red. Be okay. glad to meet you. Oh, that's with two Ds, though. <laughs> it is two Ds, absolutely. Okay. So on behalf of Robert Red, I'm Zias Caravalo from CK Recent. Thanks for watching. Uh, please hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you next time on the next episode of Zcast.